In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install the ASP.NET MVC Awesome library into your project, and also I'm going to show you how to use the Ajax dropdown helper. Let's start by creating a new project, ASP.NET MVC web application. Let's name it Ajax dropdown tutorial. I'm going to put it on my desktop. Okay. Select an empty project template, uh, vEngine Razor, and OK. Now we need to reference the awesome library. You can download it from uh, aspnetawesome.com. I'm also going to put a direct link into the description of this video. So I've downloaded it uh, already. And this is it. So I'm going to copy this into my uh, solution ok let's create a lib folder for the awesome library let's put it in here ok and just drop down tutorial content teams i'm going to copy the start team in here ok and the script. Let's copy the script. Okay. Now we can add it in Visual Studio. Let's show all the files. Okay, include in project the CSS files and include the JavaScript files. And uh, the reference to our library. Lib awesome on VC. Okay, now you, if we can look on the learn page installation, we have to add in our site master or in our case layout CSHTML. You have to add the CSS and the JavaScript files as well as the jQuery and jQuery UI. So I'm just copy, going to copy this example from here. Copy this and put it in my layout. Use shared layout CSHTML. So jQuery is already referenced, but I'll delete this line because I have it in the code that I just copied. So, okay. This is the CSS files and the JavaScript files, jQuery, jQuery UI, and awesome. That's it. Save. Now let's try and use the Ajax dropdown helper. First, we're gonna need to add the controller, home controller. Let's call it home. Let's add the view. The index view, Razor, OK. So, in order to use an awesome helper, we just type HTML. Oh. And as we can see, it's uh, red. We have to import the using awesome VC in each page that uh, we use these helpers. This is one way. But another way would be to import it for all pages at once. For this we have to edit the, for Razor views, we have to edit the web config inside the views folder. Just like here. Is it for, you can see here for Razor views in the views web config and for web form views in the main web config. So let's copy this. And put it in here. Save it. Now it works. We don't need to add the using in each page. Jax drop down. And for the name, let's call it fruit. Let's see how it works. Straight away. So we have another drop down. 
Now if we open the Mozilla Firebug plugin and uh, refresh the page, we are going to see an Ajax request that was sent by the Ajax Drawdown. It was sent to the Fleet Ajax Drawdown, get items. And uh, this controller at the moment doesn't exist, so we get this error that it, it wasn't found. By default, the Ajax Drawdown it looks for a controller with the same name as him, Fruit plus its type, Ajax Dropdown. So uh, let's let's create it. And just for the start, I'm just going to copy it from here, from the home page, and replace some stuff. Fruit Ajax Dropdown get items. This is the select V is the selected uh, value, the current value of the dropdown. You can see it here in the post. This is the parameter that was sent. And it has no value at the moment, so nothing was sent. Okay. V. And we must return a list of selectable item, which is from AMO. Awesome on VC. Okay, we added this. And uh, we're gonna do something very simple, just uh, a simple list of selectable item. Just like that. JSON of selectable item. So, value 1 for text we're gonna write mango banana apple 2 3 okay, build and let's refresh the page and that's it we have the values they are here you can see the ajax request we have the response as JSON. Now that we have this drop down working, we can use it multiple times anywhere in our project just by declaring it. I'm going to show you this. So we're going to use a different name. So because of that, let's specify the controller fruit Ajax drop down controller. They're using and uh, let's do one more fruit too okay the reason i'm doing different names is uh, because we we need to have uh, unique ids in html okay so we have three drop downs if we need to have uh, multiple drop downs with the same uh, name then we can use prefix and it will add this string into the front of the HTML ID so this way we will have a unique IDs. So let's save and refresh. So everything works. As you can see everyone sends a request to the fruit ajax or down get items. This one's because they are named fruit and this one's because they have the controller fruit adjust drop down. Now we're going to learn how to bind our adjust drop down to parent elements. For this I'm going to use the DB class which you are going to be able to download. I'll put the download link into the description of the video. Basically, this is uh, just a static class with a few collections, and uh, it's like a fake database, basically. What I'm going to use from here is this uh, categories and the uh, meals. So basically, the category is going to be the parent, and uh, the meal will be the child. I'm also going to add the view model for our view so let's call it index input okay. we're gonna have the 
category and uh, meal. Okay, let's use it here. Model index input. And I'm going to use the strongly typed Ajax dropdown helper category and meal. Okay, you don't need this anymore. And now I'm going to bind the meal to the category. Let's call parent and category. Now meal is the child of the category. Now I need the Ajax dropdown controllers for the for the category and for the meal. Category Ajax dropdown controller is okay. Now I'm going to use the DB class that I've just pasted. DB it's using um, categories select. So basically, we're creating a collection of selectable items. The value will be the ID text. Hmm. New selectable item. The text will be the name and the uh, bool selected, which indicates if this element is the selected one. And if it's true, if the ID equals V. That's all. So, and the same for the meal. Also, the meal will receive an additional parameter, parent. We could have here a different name if we would have uh, indicated an alias here. Like if you put here ABC, then it's not going to be parent, but it's going to be ABC. But we're going to leave it parent. Okay. So build. And uh, let's refresh. So as you can see, fruits and and it's everything here. That's because we haven't used the parent. So let's use it. We just returned everything. And let's use it where oh category ID equals parent. Now build and refresh. Okay, now, as you can see, it's just the fruits. If we select legumes, we have only legumes. If we select vegetables, it's only vegetables. So everything works as expected. Now we are going to see how to bind to multiple parents. So we are going to add another category. And uh, we are also going to add a simple input type text id high give it a value I don't know value also high hello now let's put a line break okay like this and also here for category one and since since it's not called category anymore we are going to need to indicate the controller category controller category Ajax Dropdown controller and let's show the parents parent category one well, with the same alias is going to be also parent alias and uh, parent high as you can see high is the id and we're going to use an alias abc 
Okay. Now let's change here. Since we have two parents now with the same alias parent, this is not going to be an int anymore, it's going to be an array. So let's use it here accordingly. It's going to be parent contains container ID. It's also a good thing to in case it parent will be null, let's initialize it. And if it's null, give it an empty array. Okay. And uh, ABC. We are going to put it here. Plus. Like this. Or maybe just like this. ABC. So all our items will end it with ABC. Whatever is written there. Let's build. Okay. So as you can see, here's our categories and fruits. So if we select Legos, we have fruits and Legos. Also, if we change this, then we will have a, a band. So let's uh, put something like high. Okay. And everything has this. Let's just delete it for the moment and select nuts and uh, grains. We have only nuts and grains. Let's put something like fruits and vegetables. As you can see, fruits and vegetables and also ABC. That's how it works. Basically, whenever a parent changes its value, the child will reload. Now we'll see how to use the predefined parameters. For this, I'm going to add a few more properties in our view model, new one, two, and three, and also I'm going to add uh, another Ajax bank controller for them. I'm going to call it new param Ajax bank controller and uh, we're gonna have a, a parameter category. This is the, the parameter that is going to be predefined. I'm going to use it here. Where category equals category ID. And I'll delete this. Okay. So now let's edit our view. Line break here. I'm just going to copy this. Okay, meal one. Hmm. I'll have to indicate the controller. Meal um HX drop controller and parameter. A parameter named category. So basically we're saying that for categories set the value 1. That's it. Nil 2 and 3. Category will be 2 and 3. So basically the category parameter will get the value 1, 2 and 3 from here. And for each drop down. So let's build and see how it works. So here's our drop downs. And the first one shows only the first category, the second category and the third as you can see. And uh, you can look here and see that the category parameter was sent with the value 1 here with the value 2 and 3. Okay, now another thing that is uh, used quite often is uh, when we have the first option as uh, text not selected or something like this. And then in order to do that, all you have to do is uh, 
basically just add a selectable item and as the first item without value so we are going to do this let's make a list and analyze a list of selectable item oh. please add new selectable item without value and for the text I write not selected and uh, I'm also going to add range all of this ok and return the list let's JSON ok let's build and refresh Okay, we still have them because we refreshed but if you do this you can see now the first option is uh, not selected so this is quite easy to do there is also another helper which is uh, exactly the same like the ajax dropdown and this helper is called ajax radio list so basically if you want to read a button list instead of a drop down just replace the helper and let's see how it works so here it is as you can see all we've changed is only the helper now if we change it here um, now it's uh, not category we have to have category ajax radio list so we're just going to put this here ok so here it is the same functionality but it's uh, a radio button list instead of the drop down so this was it, thanks very much for watching and goodbye.